By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am very happy to tell you that I am playing again on my own channel. It's been so long, so many weeks. But finally, guys, I've decided I need to come back onto my own channel and I'm playing Kuhn today. Kuhn is a brand new patron. So uh, I'm very happy, Kuhn, that you got time to play against me. The nice thing is, by the way, if you want to play against me, joining the Timmy Talks Patreon is a great way to accomplish that. Of course, you could go to tournaments here in Europe as well, where you'll probably meet me. But if you just want to play online, very comfortable from your, from your chair and your desk, uh, joining the Patreon program is a way to do that. Now, for today's match, I am playing against Kuhn, who's playing with the deck that I've called Juzam's Dreams. It's basically Dead Guy Ill, so it's white and black, but I don't really want to use the term Dead Guy because, yeah, it's difficult for YouTube. They start doing all kind of weird stuff, so Juzam's Dreams, okay? And he's playing against uh, my deck, Timmy's Spellbook, so I'm playing with my Mono Blue Timmy deck today again, and I'm really looking forward to it because the last time I played with it, uh, it was quite successful. So it's just great to shuffle it up again and uh, and to give it a go here on uh, on the channel on Timmy Talks. Now before I go to the deck decks because I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, I would first like to point out that if you want to skip that, if you want to go straight to the games. That is very possible. The easiest way to do that is by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps, including a timestamp that reads MTG Games. If you click on there, that will take you straight to the action. And uh, maybe it's also nice to know that if you want to know more about, uh, you know, specific links, for example, to the Timmy Talks Patreon page, or if you want to know more about the rule set, we're playing Swedish rules, all that information can be found in the description down below. Okay, now that that is out of the way, we're going to start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of Kuhn, Juzam's Dreams. Okay, and here we see the deck of Kuhn. So this is Dead Guy Ill, right? So that means we've got white and we've got black cards. Now, when you're building these kind of decks, you have to be aware of what do my spells and creatures cost in terms of uh, the color? Do they require a double black or a double white? And what I mean by that is if you want this deck to be efficient, you kind of want to make a choice. Am I going to commit more on the black side of the deck or on the white side of the deck? And I think it makes sense when you look at the card pool that you choose for black, just like Kuhn did, right? Because the best creature in black is probably Hypnotic Spectre, two black and one to cast. So you're already kind of hard in on color black. Underworld Dreams, which works fantastic in a deck like this because you're playing pretty aggressively. Again, works great, a three black to cast. So again, you're going to commit more to black right? If you're lucky enough, like Kuhn, to own four Jews and Jins, of course, you're going to play with them. That's the first thing I want to say. But the second thing is, it's also two black. So you're pretty heavy invested into the color black. So that means black will be your number one color. And white is actually super good as your second color. Because all the spells you want to play with white only have one white in their casting cost. Sword to Plowshares, Disenchant, Balance, Armageddon, you know, it's all just one white in the casting cost. So it's quite easy to, to play it out in, in a deck like this. So it's it's perfect. And I actually want to make a big compliment to Kuhn here because what I'm liking about this deck is that you haven't splashed in any blue power or any of the restricted cards. You're really stuck to, okay, I'm playing black, I'm playing white, I'm playing traditional Dead Guy Ale. These are the cards I'm going for. And from an aesthetic point of view, I really like that. I really like looking at this deck photo. I think it looks awesome. It looks beautiful. It also looks a little bit scary. I think if I think of my deck, my mono blue deck, what I'm really scared for is a traditional uh, ritual hippie. Because turn one hippie for me, I cannot counter in turn one. I, I only have one maze in the deck. My answers are side blast and control magic once a creature is on the board or maybe an icy manipulator, but that's just going to take ages. So before I solved your problem, I'm probably down four or five cards already and I've probably lost the game. So. For me, that hippie looks super scary, okay? And also all the land destruction looks super scary because that means that you can kind of win it in tempo because my deck is not very fast. So I need a lot of lands. I always want to keep two blue open because I'm a horrible blue player. So this is going to be really tough for me. Of course, my deck is also really good. Talking about that, let's take a look at my deck so I can kind of show you my weaknesses and the strengths compared to this list of Kuhn. Thank you, Kuhn, for bringing this uh, to the table. Now let's take a look at my brew, Timmy's Spellbook. And here we see Timmy's Spellbook. Now there's a whole story that I uh, made up with this deck, but I'm not gonna bother you with that right now. 
Uh, it's kind of funny though. It's about Timmy going on an adventure, but oh no, no, I'm not going to bother you with that. Anyway, this is a tradition, well, not traditional blue deck, but it's got a lot of blue characteristics, right? At the start of the game, this deck is not going to do much. You're just going to play out your blue sources. You're going to try to keep two blue open, hoping that you have a counter spell to kind of counter away the early pressure. You want to kill the smaller creatures with your Timmies. There are four Timmies in this deck, so four protocol sorcerers. So you can kind of, the green stompy decks, you can hopefully kind of ping away that pressure. Then um, as the game kind of unfolds, you start playing out your more control cards like Icy Manipulator. Um, you know, you can cast a Psyblast on a Sarah Angel that maybe came out earlier on the Surrender Pafrit. You want to start casting some blockers like a Ghost Ship, which is a super good blocker. There are also actually quite a lot of creatures in this deck, right? We've got two Air Elementals. We've got two Ghost Ships. We've got a Pirate Ship. Um, you know, we've got Mahamoti Jin. We've got a Clone. So there are quite a lot of creatures in here. Um, and what you want to do basically in, in turn four, five, you want to survive till turn four, right? Let me put it that way. Then when you're there, you want to kind of slowly start uh, getting control of the match, right? And you're going to do that by playing out your, your icy manipulators. You're going to do that by playing out your control magics. Time them really well, right? Ideally, you don't want to play out a control magic without counter backup. If you do, then you want to do it against a deck where you think, okay, they don't play with any enchantment removal or... They play with, uh, or they've already played out a lot of their enchantment removal, right? So you've already played out a couple of bait cards, like the Icy Manipulator, for example. Yeah, or the Copy Artifact. Copy Artifact can be a great tool to ramp ahead in the game as well. Usually when my opponent plays a Soul Ring, I always try to copy that Soul Ring ASAP, because Copy is just... A, a Soul Ring is great, I mean, in this deck, because it allows you to play out your ICs early, it also allows you to cast... Uh, your creatures early, but also keep counter backup up while you do, which is quite important, right? You want to protect your assets with your four, four counter spells and your uh, your mana drain. So um, what I'm worried about with this deck, and obviously I do play blue power, so what I'm worried about is my opponent just being able to have a super explosive start and being able to play out a, a super big beefy creature. So Arabian Nights can be very problematic for me, like a Juzem Jin with a Dark Ritual coming turn two maybe, that could be really a problem. So that's why I'm playing with two City in the Bottles main, because most big beefy creatures come from the Arabian Nights expansion. So Surrender Perfreet, Urnum Jin, uh, Juzam Jin, they're just big problems for me. Another big problem for me is a Library of Alexandria, because a Library of Alexandria can win games, and I'm playing Mono Blue. So I cannot kill any lands. So that's also a reason for me to play City in a Bottle main. Talking about lands, Another problem of this deck, there are quite a lot of problems of this deck, is um, uh, the Mistress Factories. So that's why I'm playing with four Mistress Factories of my own, simply to block the Mistress Factories of my opponent. That's also what I like about the Icy Manipulator, by the way. I can tap down those uh, those Mistress Factories. So that's that's actually kind of nice. And of course, I can use my, my Psy Blast as soon as those Mistress Factories are animated. But, you know, it's difficult to deal with lands because you're playing with blue. Blue doesn't have uh, a sinkhole, ice storm, stone rain. Um, it doesn't have Armageddon, right? So if, if a land's on the table, there's very little that I can do about it. And actually, um, City in a Bottle is really good from that perspective. And I'm only playing with one Arabian Nights card besides the two City in a Bottles, which is Library of Alexandria. So for me, it's not a big sacrifice to play with City in a Bottle. What I'm scared against in this matchup is the Hypnotic Spectre of Kuhn. Like, if he can get a Hypnotic Spectre turn one, there's really nothing I can do. And I'm just going to lose a lot of cards, take a lot of damage. So I'm just, you know, crossing my fingers that that doesn't happen. A another weak spot of this deck, maybe I shouldn't tell you guys, because then when you play against me, you know. But that's like a Black Vice and stuff. I love to have cards in hand, I love to draw. So an Underworld Dreams deck, like a traditional Underworld Dreams deck with a Vice plan... That is really tricky. That is really tricky for me. Anyway, um, this is my deck. We've looked at the deck of Kuhn, and that means we're ready. Let's go to the games. Game number one. Here we go. It's Kuhn on the play, starting with a Mishra's Factory, a Mox Jet. Okay, what's coming next? And a Chaos Orb. Wow, that is a really good start. And now it's my turn. Let's see what I can do. Okay, playing a Library of Alexandria, very interesting. Of course, I know that uh, Kuhn here has that Chaos Orb, so he's probably going to flip on it. So upon activation, I'm probably going to respond by drawing a card. Interesting strategy here. Of course, I could have chosen to first just play an island. 
but I think I want Kuhn here to use his Chaos Orb on the Loa. This may sound really silly, but my deck is quite slow and yeah, I just don't want to lose. Okay, he's first going to attack for two. That's a very good move, putting me on 18. And okay, now he's going to flip. So I'm going to use it, of course, in response of the activation. And now he's going to flip it. Okay, let's see, he's going to take his time, of course. That's a really good flip. A full hit, nice double rotation, I believe. Very good flip, so the Loa is gone. I mean, I'm sad, but I'm also happy because a Loa game, you know. And I think if I go purely on the Loa card draw engine, which is great, but it might bite me because I think Kuhn's deck is just going faster. So now he's going to pass, so then I'll go to nine cards. It looks like we're discussing a few things, but maybe about the flip. We're chatting a lot, of course, as well. These are just casual online games. Uh, playing an island here, I'm probably just going to pass, and that means I've got to discard, because remember, I, I drew a card, so I'm discarding an island here. That's kind of harsh, but my deck really doesn't have a lot of one-drops. Of course, I've got a Mox Sapphire. That would have been ideal to play the Mox here. I also have um, a Soul Ring. But those are about my only options when it comes to a turn one play. And there we see a Scrubland here. Are we going to see a Juzam Jin? Okay, he's going to tap. Oh, three. We're going to see Hypnotic Spectre. There we see the Hypnotic Spectre. So I was kind of scared for this. This is going to be tricky for me. I'm probably just going to play my second island and pass here. I also play one maze of if main. I play two in my sideboard though, so I'm probably going to board those in just purely against the Hypnotic Spectres. So I'm going to play three mazes of if main, but now I'm just playing one. I'm looking at my hand, looking at my two islands. Ooh, I've got an option here. That's interesting. Maybe I've got an Ancestral Recall. A Time Walk would be great because I could Time Walk, take an extra turn, find land number three, and hopefully have. Um, a side blast in hand, but look at that. I'm already shuffling up, so I guess I don't. Putting my uh, my cards ready here for that hypnotic specter attack. So he's gonna attack for two here. At least he's not attacking with the factory. That's something. So I'm gonna take two damage. Gonna go to sixteen, and I'm gonna lose a card. Which card am I gonna lose? Number four. And, okay, I'm losing an Icy Manipulator. Not ideal, but not the worst. I'm trying to remember what I had in hand when I played this game. It's been a while back. Hopefully, I've got a land Psyblast. And I've got to change my life total, by the way. Am I forgetting my life total here? Are we going to see a Sinkhole? There's a Sinkhole. So I'm probably going to counter this, well, hopefully. I really cannot afford... Okay, there's a mana drain. That's actually really good news. That means two extra mana for me. I've got to change my life total, though, because I'm on 16. So this sometimes happens. You're so focused on the discard that you forget your life, which is super annoying because I should be on 16. So I'm getting two mana from the mana drain. And we'll just have to wait... Okay, there's a Mistress Factor. I'm going to use the two mana. And, ooh, I'm going to cast Chaos Orb. So that means I'm probably going to flip her. So I'm going to activate. Hopefully, Kuhn doesn't have a Disenchant. If he's got one, he can use it now. He doesn't have one. Okay, so now I'm going to flip on the Hypnotic Spectre. It's quite a nice game. And, yep, yeah, it's a hit. So the Hippie's a goner here. And how many cards have in hand? Four cards in hand. So I've only lost one card to the Hypnotic Spectre. That's not too bad. And I think I'm going to pass turn here. It is annoying me a lot, I have to admit, that I'm still on 18 because you should be on 16. So hopefully those two points of damage are not going to have a big influence on the game. But, I mean... They could, so I'm sorry, Kuhn, for making that mistake. 
And he's going to draw. I mean, if he can find like a juice, I do have two blue open, of course, so I can't counter. But, I mean, I've already played my mana drain. It's not like I'm playing four counter spells and a drain. I won't, it's not like I always have that counter spell. So if I was if I was Kunin, I would have like a big threat. I would just play it out. I would say, you know what? If you've got a counter spell, show it. Is he going to do that now? Are we going to see another Hypnotic Spectre? Yes, there's another Hypnotic Spectre here. Quick response. I'm grabbing my cards like crazy playing a counter spell. And then we're going to have an attack here. So I'm going to drop to 16, but it should be on 14 here. And I'm going to untap and draw. So this is maybe a tip for everybody when you're the one playing Hypnotic Spectre. Just make sure that the person counts the loss of life. Because sometimes you're, like I said, you're so focused on discarding a card. Here we see a Timmy, by the way. So there's my Prodigal Sorcerer, Tim. Which at a certain point could become problematic for Kun if I can get multiple Tims. And I mean, look at Kun's hand size. It's getting quite low for him now. He's got just two cards in hand. Are we going to see another Hypnotic Spectre? That would be crazy. Oh, an Underworld Dreams. That is a very good card against me, actually. Because I love to play the control game, the weight game. But with Underworld Dreams, you don't always have that luxury. So I'm going to start taking damage from now on. There's an attack. Okay, for a moment there, I thought he, he put his land away. So I'm going to drop here to 14. Also going to take a damage next turn, going to drop to 13. So actually, Kun's doing quite well. There's a Swords on the Timmy. So I'm going to go back up to 15, but then, of course, I'm going to take a damage. And there's a pass turn. So I'm going to untap here. I'm going to draw a card for turn. Hopefully, I'm going to take a damage. Playing an Island. Am I forgetting to take a damage here? Ah, I'm just playing so sloppy. This is just annoying to look at. I should put, what I usually do when I play against Underworld Dreams is I put my, my life counter on the top. So I can see there's a bit of a glitch here. Oh, I think now we're talking about that life loss probably. Yeah, I'm changing it to 14. Okay, that's good. The glitch is gone it seems. We see Kuhn with one card in hand. It's still his turn. I mean, he can attack with the factory, but I mean, it's probably not a good plan because I can just block with my factory, pump the factory. Unless, of course, he's got a Swords or a Disenchant in hand. It looks like he doesn't because he's passing turn. So I'm going to drop to 13 here. So I've got more cards in hand than Kun. And I'm, I'm still on double digits, so it's not too bad. The thing is, I do have that Underworld Dream. So it looks like I'm playing something out. Okay, there's a Ghost Ship. So I think under normal circumstances, Perhaps I wouldn't have done this because I want to keep two blue open, but I kind of feel the pressure of that Underworld Dreams, right? So I just want to make sure that I can deal some damage here to Kun. And the flyer is ideal because now I can attack next turn with my Ghost Ship and I can put my Mishra's Factory just up for block. And there's the pass here to Kun. Let's see what he can find. And there's just a pass turn. So this is perfect for me. Gonna go to 12. Let's hope that he doesn't have a Swords or anything else. But I don't think he does. Because if, if so, he would have played it out already the previous turn. Because then I have my blue mana tapped. So I'm just gonna attack here with the Ghost Ship. Finally dealing some damage to Kuhn. So he's gonna drop to 18. And I'm gonna pass turn. Kuhn has got three cards in hand. And he's just passing. I wonder what those cards could be. I'm gonna go to 11. Three cards in hand again. Attacking for two. He's dropping to 16. Tapping one. Going to play out a soul ring here. Going to go to two. Not really the card I'm hoping for. Unless, of course, later in the game I find a brain geyser. Then the soul ring is fantastic. It looks like Kun is just stuck. I mean, maybe he's on... I don't know, just finding lands. I'm going to drop to 10 because of the Underworld Dreams. I'm going to attack here. Forgetting to untap my lands, by the way. I need to untap that one island. 
Yeah, exactly. Now I'm untapping it and I'm just passing turn as well. So for me, this is going really well. I'm just taking one damage a turn, but I'm dealing two damage to Kuhn. So I'm fine with this scenario. I probably have a counter spell in hand. Kuhn's got a pretty full grip of cards here. Perhaps he's got a library of Alexandria in hand. That could be the case that he's saving up for the, for the Loa and he just doesn't have a better option anyway. I'm going to go to four cards here. Of course, I've got City in a Bottle against the library, but then I have to have it in hand though. So if that's what he's doing, it could be a very good strategy. If he doesn't have better options anyway, playing a Maze of If here and attacking with my Ghost Ship. So he's going to drop to 12 and a pass turn again. So I believe seven cards in hand now for Kuhn. He probably has a Loa. That could be the only explanation here. So next turn, he's going to drop his Loa probably. I'm going to drop to eight here. With four cards in hand, I'm going to attack first. Going to put him on 10. Going to play an Island. Three cards in hand, and I'm going to pass here. So I believe Kuhn is now going to eight, if I've counted it correctly. So then he's going to, if he's got the Loa, he's going to play it now. I mean, that's the only reason I can think about for him, not just at least playing out some lands. Well, he does play with Armageddon as well, so that could be a strategy also. I wonder what he's going to do here. I mean, a Loa would be perfect because I cannot counter a Loa. There's nothing really I can do against it. And he's just passing. Wow. So maybe he's got seven in hand now that I miscounted. That now he's got seven in hand. And that's why he's passing. So I'm untapping. I'm going to drop here to seven. So I'm slowly dying as well. And remember, I forgot to count those two damage at the start of the game. So I'm actually here on, on, uh, on five. Attacking here with the ship. Ooh, there's a source of plowshares. There's a counter spell on the swords. So I want to keep my ship alive. I want to continue dealing damage here. Going to protect my ship. He's going to go to eight. And I'm going to cast a Tim here. So the Tim is going to help me if it can stay alive. So just two cards in hand, it seems. And the pass turn. So I believe Kuhn now has seven, no six in hand after that sword. So now he's going to go back up to seven. And there's a pass. This is such an interesting game. Like, I would expect Kuhn to play way more cards. Perhaps he just really only has lands. I'm going to go up to three cards in hand here. I can attack and, of course, ping starting next turn, which would be really nice. Attacking here for two, so he's going to drop to six. So we're both on six now. And I'm going to play another Tim. Okay, wow. So just two cards in hand. He's on six. And step, I can ping him to five. Oh, there's the Loa. So he did have a Loa in hand. But he wanted to wait with playing it out until he has seven in hand. That makes sense, of course, because now he can use it straight away. He can draw a card. So he's got eight in hand. He just needs the swords. If he can swords away the ship. I mean, then it's not over yet. Remember, he also plays with four Jews amps, but that's really a bad idea because of the maze now. I guess like a creature like a Sengir Vampire, that would be really good for him. With, because with the Sengir, he doesn't take damage and at least he can block the, the ghost ship, but he's so far behind already. There's a single probably on the maze. Okay, gonna lose the maze. Does he have a follow-up? No, it looks like he's passing turns. I'm gonna ping him on end step. He's gonna go to five. I'm gonna go to five as well. Going to draw for turn. Let's see what I can do. If I've got a Psyblast, I can actually kill him right now. Going to tap. 
Cast a Psyblast. He's gonna go to one. Yeah, that's it. He doesn't. He doesn't play with counter spells. He doesn't have a. Well, he could animate the factory and sorts his own factory. Then he can survive, I guess. He would go up to eight. He would take four. Goes to four. No, then he can still kill him. No, there's no way he can survive this. He is animating though. Does he have a swords? Pumping. I think he's got a swords. Or, oh, he's going to play Divine Offering, but that doesn't work because Divine Offering works with casting cost. So, unfortunately for Kuhn, this is not going to work. If he would have had, like, a Gem Day Tome or something, he could have gained four life. But, no, 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 no. So, I really thought that he had a Sword Supply Shares here. So, he's going to drop to one. I'm going to drop to three. And then he can ping him with my Timmy and win the game, I think. Yeah, so he's going to target my Soul Ring instead with that Divine Offering. So I'm going to gain a life. I'm going to go up to six. And yeah, he's going to go to one and then I, I ping him to death here. Yep, so that's it. So game one, one. Wow. I kind of feel like I was really lucky there, Kun. Did you, I think you, you were on a land pocket or something and we're just like, okay, I'm going to keep the lands and I'm just going to use... Yeah, look at that hand. Okay, wow. Two disenchants that were kind of useless against me. There was that ritual and a lot of lands. That's just, just bad luck, Kuhn. Anyway, this was game number one. Now let's continue with game number two. Game number two. Here we go. Kuhn on to play, of course, after losing that first one. There's a City of Brass. There is a Mox Pearl tapping the City of Brass. Uh-oh. Juzam? Hippie? Even worse. Turn one Hippie. And he is going to drop to 19 because of the city. But uh, wow, this is bad news, right? No Mox Sapphire for me. So just an island and a pass. Already shuffling up. So let's see if I now do take the damage from the Hypnotic Spectre. So there's the attack. So I'm going to drop to 18. He's going to do 5. And I'm going to lose a land, okay? So this is going to be really, really tricky for me. Because I'm not only... Okay, at least I've got enough lands. Tapping two. What can I play? Chaos Orb, probably? Yeah, so I'm just playing this Chaos Orb because usually I wouldn't do this. Because I'm giving him a lot of options now to Disenchant. Okay, there's the Disenchant. But I don't really have an option because there's, you know, direct pressure from the get-go because of the Hypnotic Spectre. So I'm just going to lose more cards. I'm going to go to 16. going to lose card number 3. So I'm going to lose another island. I mean, I, I, I probably boarded in a lot of mazes. So let's hope it can just draw a maze of it. If it can find a maze or a land and a side blast, I can kind of contain the situation. Oh, ho, ho, there's Juzam Jin entering the party. 5-5 five, five powerhouse. Oh, man, it's looking really bad for me. That's 7 points of damage unless I can do something. I really need to do something. And, okay, playing a copy artifact on the Mox Pearl. I'm really desperate. What I think happened here, perhaps I've got a Psyblast in hand that I want to get. But, I mean, things are looking super bad. I'm going to drop to 9 here. And here you can really see Kuhn's deck working full swing, where with the Ritual, yeah, losing the Brain Geyser doesn't matter much at this point. Anyway, where you could see him like using the Ritual, having a turn one Hippie, then also ramping up, getting an early Juzam, just putting full pressure on the board here. It's really nice to see. This is what Kuhn's deck wants to be doing. I'm going to tap four to probably cast Icy, or do I have a Control Magic? Okay, Control Magic. But, I mean, what to control here? If I don't take the Juzam, I'm going to take 5 damage from him. From him. If I do take the Juzam, I'm going to lose a card to the Hypnotic Spectre. Remember, the creatures are tapped. So, okay, I'm going to take the Juzam. Just because it's a cool creature to own, I guess. But I'm, I'm so dead. I am so dead. I mean, this is going to save me 5 life. But I'm still going to take 4 because I'm expecting him to attack with the factory. So I'm going to drop to 5. And then I'm going to take damage from my own Juzam, so I'm going to drop to four. Oh, man. T 
Talking a little bit about the autograph, by the way, on the Jews end, which is on a really nice spot. Uh, Mark Tedden has got a really sweet autograph, the, uh, the artist who did Jews Am Jin. But it doesn't change anything about the reality, and that is that I'm losing this game hard. I'm expecting him to swing in for four, so I'm going to drop to five. That's what I'm expecting. Maybe he's got even better options. We'll see. Does he have a disenchant here? Going to go to 16. There's a demonic tutor. Is he going to tutor for a disenchant? I mean, why not? It's going to go through the deck. Yeah, there's disenchant. Tutoring for the disenchant. <laughs> Taking care of the control magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now I do, you know, I mean, I was already thinking I'm copying the Mox Pearl for a reason. I want to ramp into something. Could be a side blast. In this case, it was a control magic, but I knew there was a reason for me to, to make that play. It does come back tapped. So at least I've saved myself five points of damage, basically given myself a turn, I guess. Yeah, or else he could have killed me already. So I'm going to take... Oh, no, no, because he's tapped the factory. So I'm just going to take two there. So I'm going to drop to seven. I'm still dead next turn. Going to lose to counterspell. Counterspells are use, useless when you're under this much pressure, right? Because I've got to tap out all the time. So I'm on seven. And Kuhn needs to take a damage from the Jews. I'm I'm not that it's relevant here, but he's going to go to 15. Exactly. Now he's going to attack. And it's end of the line here, right? I mean, what could I have? Even a Cyblast cannot win it here for me. And no, I've got a Mahamuti Jin, which is really cool, but it's yeah, it's not good enough. Well done here. So that means it's a 1-1 one -one exciting stuff. We're going to go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So it's 1-1. One -one. I'm on the play at least. That's a slight advantage. It looks like, looks like Kuhn is taking a mulligan. So he's going to six then. He's on the draw though. So he'll be back to seven. But of course, it's good news for me. I'm hoping for a slow start by Kuhn here. Starting with an island and then a pass. There is a swamp and just a pass. Okay, so this is good news for me. I can get two blue islands that always kind of feel safe. And then a pass. So there is another swamp. Are we going to see a sinkhole? Oh, he's taking it back. Making a different decision here. Going for the Mishra's factory. So if he would have played the factory earlier, okay, on end step here, I'm going to cast the Ancestral Recall. So finding some blue power here in game number three. That's good news for me. And drawing a card. So I've got plenty of cards in hand now. Probably nine, I believe. Now let's see if I can also empty my hand or else I just have to play a land and discard. That will be kind of uh, bad news. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here with all the options. So there is an island. Maybe I'm just going to tap out and, oh, I'm actually going to discard, discarding a GM day tome. Interesting. So I wonder why I played the Ancestral Recall. Perhaps because I'm low on lands in hand. That could be the reason. Discarding my GM day tome. That kind of feels bad. So seven in hand. So maybe I was low on lands. That's the only reason I could think about it, or else I wouldn't have cast that Ancestral Recall this early in the game. So there's an attack. No, not an attack for two. Instead, he's gonna... No, he's gonna attack for two. I thought he was going to cast a Hypnotic Spectre. He's gonna attack for two. You're gonna drop to 18. And there's a Dark Ritual into a Hypnotic Spectre. Let's see if I've got that counter spell. Or maybe that Cyblast. I've got a mana drain here. Okay, so I've got a mana drain. That means I'm going to get three mana. Ooh, if I've got like an air elemental or something, I could cast an air elemental. That would be glorious. I mean, I haven't really played a nice, big, beefy creature. Tap one. Take away the three. I could cast Icy Manipulator. That could be an option here. Oh, I'm going to cast a Timmy instead. Okay, that's kind of nice. Remember, we are playing Swedish old school, so there's no mana burn. And I've got, of course, a strip mine against the Mishra's factory. 
I think what I should have done, by the way, here is use my strip mine more aggressively on the factory because now if Kun would have had like a juice MG and he could have cast it. Kun a little bit in the tank here, maybe. Yeah, he is animating it and attacking. Dropping here to 16. Interesting. I thought I would have used the strip mine. Choosing not to do it though. Maybe I'm waiting on end step. Tapping two more. What is he going to do? Okay, he's going to cast a Dark Ritual into a Juzam. Can I counter this? It looks like I can't. Oh, interesting. So maybe I've got to control magic. Like there are a lot of options here and reasons why I'm not doing what I'm doing. And there's a control magic. Okay, so now I'm starting to understand my line of play here. I want to use my strip mine for a potential white source on the side of Kun. The problem, of course, is once he's found the white source, yes, I can take it away with strip mine, but in response, Kun can get one white floating and he can still play his disenchant. He could, of course, play a sinkhole on my strip mine, forcing me to make a decision. Is that what he's going to do here? I wonder. No, he's going to cast a Demonic Tutor instead. Is he going to look up a land with this Demonic Tutor? Perhaps a Scrub Land? That kind of says enough. If he, if he can find a Scrub Land, use the Scrub Land to disenchant. It would be worth it. Yeah, there's the Scrub Land, so I'm expecting a disenchant here. From the side of Kun. It's gonna shuffle up. Yeah, I'm already putting away <laughs> my control magic. I'm like, okay, man. I mean, I keep trying to steal the Juzam of Kun, but uh, he's not having it. He's like, it's my Juzam. You're not getting it. There's the disenchant. And I, I believe I boarded in. Both my maze of it from the sideboard for this game. So I'm playing with three maze. So maybe I've got a maze in hand. Another option would be uh, a city in a bottle would be ideal as well. So I wonder if I'm going to use the strip now. Because I still think it's a good decision, right? Without white sources, he cannot play disenchant or swords, which is really good news for me. So I'm going to ping Kun here. Okay, of course. So he's going to drop to 19. And I'm not going to strip. Interesting. Maybe I first just want to see my card. I don't have to strip. Or I've got a Mahamoti Jin. That would be super cool. I'm hoping on a Mahamoti. But maybe then it's even better to first strip the White Swords, wait for the next turn, play a land, then play Mahamoti because then he cannot play his Swords on it. I wonder if I have something against the Juzam. Tapping six. Oh, Brain Geyser. I thought there was going to be a Mahamoti Jin, but no Mahamoti yet. I'm just hoping to cast my Mahamoti. It would be really sweet to see a board state with Juzam Jin and Mahamoti. But I'm in for a lot of pain, by the way, because I've, 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 first off, I've, I had to tap out for the Brain Geyser, or chose to anyway. Um, so I'm taking a bit of a risk, but he can attack me now for seven. I guess I can block the factory and ping. There is a little glitch. Yeah, so I'm going to block and ping. Going to kill the Mishra's factory. This is quite nice with the Tim. So trading the factory for the Tim. Going to drop to 11 here. Oh, does he have a hippie? Dark Ritual. Sengir Vampire. Oh, it's looking bad. I'm on 11. Okay, I'm going to untap. I need something here. Finding a land. I mean... What do I need? I could play Icy, stop the bleeding a little bit. Maybe another Control Magic. I've got a lot of options. And I've got a lot of cards in hand, remember? Okay, so I'm playing this out. And I'm still not stripping away the White Source. I think it's a bit of a mistake not using that Strip Mine. Yes, my deck needs a lot of mana, but if he now can find a Disenchant, at least I can still... I mean, he wants to go and attack. 
Okay, so I probably want to keep a counter spell open, right? So I'm going to tap down the Juzi. I'm going to take four. I'm going to drop to seven. Oh, this is so risky. There's a Mishra's Factory. At least Kuhn's hand's empty, of course. I mean, he's, he's kind of played a lot of dark rituals. So that's card disadvantage for Kuhn. Okay, there's a Maze of If. So it looks like now I've got it under control. I can strip the factory. I can maze the creature and tap a creature. And remember, because of the Brain Geyser, I think I still have got like a lot of cards in hand. Perhaps five, maybe even six. So the Brain Geyser was really good to give me the needed cards to kind of solve the problems on the board. And Kuhn is now top decking. It looks like I'm really in the tank here. I'm on seven, of course. And I'm again, look, look at me kind of going for that strip mine and thinking, is this the moment to use it? I'm gonna strip. Okay, interesting, you're stripping the scrubland. And passing turn, that does mean I'm gonna take some damage here. So a damage for Kuhn because of his own Juzam, I believe. So it should go to 16. I do think this is a good decision. Ooh, there's a mind twist for two. There's a counter spell though. Countering this mind twist. And then tapping down the Juzam, probably, yeah, and sending back the vampire. No, I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna use a Psy Blast. Gonna go to five. I understand this, but it's also risky. Remember, Kuhn is playing with Underworld Dreams. He's still very high up on 16. Playing another island, tapping five. Oh, this is sweet air elemental. Love playing this creature. This is one of the creatures when I was starting to build this blue deck for the first time, because this has been a long journey, uh, building this Timmy spellbook. Air elemental was there, because air elemental is just, I think it's such a beautiful card, stunning art, I had to play it. Okay, there's a strip mine. Strip on my maze. And using my Icy on the Juzam, and there's a pass here, Bakun. But this is a good move. Okay, there's another maze, and now you can really see that sideboard plan working. I can attack Kuhn for four now, and I could even choose to untap it with the maze on end step. Attacking for four, I think untapping it on end step is probably the best thing to do. Yeah, I'm untapping it because Kuhn are just playing with sinkhole. So then if you can find a sinkhole, he can deal damage. And I'm already quite low. I'm on five here. He's going to drop to 10. So because he has a Juzam, he also takes uh, five damage a turn. Because he takes one from the Juzam and four from my Air Elemental. So tapping down the Juzam and taking, uh, taking on my turn. Kuhn is top decking, so I don't really have to worry about anything in his hand. Attacking for four here. He's gonna drop to six, untapping the air elemental. And this is just looking really good for me. He's gonna go to five. Next turn I can have this. Wow, there was really a moment in the game when he had Sengir Vampire and um, the Juzam and a factory. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna win this. But I got myself back in the game because of the Brain Geyser, found the answers that I needed. And in my deck, life is really a resource. I'm on five now. Tapping down to Juzam. Taking my turn. Okay, so I think I got this one. I mean, you're not there until you're there. I got attack now with the air elemental. It's gonna go to one. Gonna untap. Yeah, the Juzam, that's it. Juzam is killing Kun. Ah, man, despite the fact that I love the Juzam, Obviously, it can work against you. The same thing we've seen in the past with the Serendip. And, uh, of course, my sideboard plan really worked out. Well, it was not much. It was kind of a no-brainer, right? You know, okay, I got to board in my maces against the, the early creature threats, the hippies, and, of course, the, uh, the Juzum Jin. And here you're seeing uh, what I boarded out, a pirate ship and a Timmy for two mazes of if. That was kind of it. Uh, Kuhn, I would really like to thank you for uh, playing this match, man. It was just great fun. Also great fun to kind of show... A game with me in it on the channel because it's been so long anyway um this is it for now so a 2-1 victory here for timmy's spellbook 
Thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It really helps a lot and it's completely free to do. Also, I would love to hear from you. Please comment on this video. Let me know what you liked or what you didn't like. Let me know perhaps you saw a move that you would have done differently. Let me know why. Let me know what you think of the beautiful Juzam's Dreams deck. Uh, it's always interesting uh, to hear. And um, yeah, oh, wait a minute. If you're new to the channel, of course, please subscribe. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And before you go, there's just one more thing that I would like to ask you. And that is, I would like to ask you to visit the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Just have a look. Maybe it's something for you with, uh, with Patreon. You can support the channel financially and you can really help me keep Timmy Talks afloat. It already starts with just $1 a month. The cool thing is if you become a patron, you can join the Timmy Talks Discord server. Um, you can also play against me if you want. And last but not least, you can join into all the online events of Timmy Talks, so all the tournaments. And actually there's one more thing before I forget, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? Well, this end scroll. Ich kann das Fingertisch zum Bakasin.